<laughs> okay. That's <laughs> the Christmas sugar. I'd like to call yes. the December Pocosin City yes. School Board meeting to order. And first up is Pledge to the Flag and Inspirational Reading. Brendan. Thank you. Jace is a second grader from Mrs. Barefoot's class. Jace is the son of Aaron and Cade Simons, who both serve in the United States Air Force. Jace's favorite color is teal and says the best part of school is recess. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lily is a second grader from Mrs. Stern's class. Lily's favorite thing about school is science. When she grows up, Lily wants to be a veterinarian, and her favorite color is teal. Lily wrote her own reading about her wish for this holiday season. My wish this holiday season is for everyone to have the things they need. I wish everyone had a place to live, warm clothes to wear, and food to eat. I know I am so lucky to have everything I need. This holiday season, I would like to help give these things to others. Thank you, students. Um, very, very well done. And next up is our student presentation. And students, if you would please uh, stick around for just a few minutes when you're done. We're going to take a short intermission so we can speak to you, OK? So uh, Meredith Archer, primary school librarian, has been incorporating STEM, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math, instruction into library media lessons. Students visit the library as part of the Encore class rotation and also have the ability to check out books on a daily basis in the mornings. Ms. Archer is on the division STEM committee and has been adding more STEM-based learning opportunities into students' library experiences here. Ms. Archer has received Pocosin Education Foundation grant funds to supply storybook STEM read-aloud books and materials coding robots, and other additional STEM center materials. Ms. Archer and several first and second grade students will now explain more about how the library of the future is happening now at Pocosin Primary School. <coughs> students presenting are Bradigan Corbett, Lauren Jones, Jack McKay, Lily Bell Horning, Bree Crockett, Annabelle Crockett, Lauren Kresovich, Olivia Brownheim, Carter Lagunas and Mason Waters. Good evening, and thank you for allowing me the opportunity tonight to share the Pocosin Primary School Library Program with you. I don't know what's happening. Did I not turn it on? Oh, there we go. The Pocosin Primary School Library is a fun, student-centered place where our youngest Pocosin City Public School students are gaining independence, learning to love books, and having a whole lot of fun. From self-checkout to providing me with book requests and visiting numerous times during the week to check out new books, the library is a place the students love to be. In second grade, we begin Storybook STEM. Each month, we read a high interest story together, and then the students spend the next two library visits working with a small group to complete a STEM challenge that relates to the story. Classes began 
the year by establishing expectations and norms for STEM groups so that when they begin each challenge, they are prepared to work together successfully. The STEM groups spend time planning, designing, building, and finally sharing their STEM product. Storybook STEM gives students opportunities to collaborate and communicate with their classmates while bolstering their creativity and critical thinking skills, all while learning how to be a team player and overall good group citizen. Not to mention they are highly engaged and having a lot of fun. Some of our upcoming storybook STEM units include the book Martin's Big Words, where students will create a list of character traits that, that describe Dr. King, write a trait on each cup, and then use those cups to build the highest tower possible. Last year, students loved seeing how a group with fewer traits and fewer cups could still have a taller tower based on how they chose to construct their tower. Last year, we read Jamie O'Rourke and the Big Potato, and then students worked together to make a pulley out of string, two cups, a craft stick, and pipe cleaners. They then used their pulley as a balance to determine the weight of their own potato. So far this year, students have completed two storybook STEM challenges. The first required them to make something useful using a box and a variety of other materials. The, pro the products were really creative. We had a mail holder and key hook, which is the top left, a cell phone stand, a birdhouse on the bottom left, and a piggy bank, just to name a few. Lily Bell Horning, Lauren Kresovich, and Jack McKay would like to share their thoughts about Storybook STEM with you. Do you want to stand up here? Okay. I like doing STEM challenges because they are fun and because my dad is an engineer. We get together as a team and, and STEM challenges help us learn how to solve problems. I really love STEM challenges because we can make super cool things and it's fun when something goes wrong and I get to fix it. With our second STEM challenge this year, we read A Wish to Be a Christmas Tree, and students worked together to build their own Christmas tree. As you can see from the pictures and some of the examples here tonight, a few more here. <laughs> Groups used many different approaches to building their group's tree. Annabelle Crockett, and Carter Lagoon, Annabelle Crockett is going to share some details about the STEM challenge, and Carter Lagunas will share his thoughts as well. For the challenge, we had to build the tallest tree without it tipping over, using only using five pipe cleaners in one cup. We get together to work during the STEM challenge and fix the things that didn't work. It helped us learn to have fun at the same time. In addition to storybook STEM, all PPS students have the opportunity to learn to code with BeBots. The learning mats allow students to learn to code while also reinforcing many of the skills they are learning in the classroom, such as 10 frames, counting money, beginning letter sounds, simple machines, and map skills. Brad again Corbett is going to tell you a little bit about how the BeBots work, and then a few of our first graders are going to demonstrate. So, um... The way they really work is that you can control them 
whatever way you want on a little board and you just have to press the button and then they'll work and then um and then they really help help you learn with math <coughs> and they're really really <coughs> fun and learnful At this time, we would, um, we're going to have some of our students demonstrating the B-Bots, and we would like to invite Dr. Parrish, Dr. Fox, and any of the school board members that would like to come uh, learn how to code with the B-Bots as well. Are you ready? I need to do Are you ready? Now, Breslin Crockett, Mason Waters, and Lauren Jones would like to share some of their thoughts about coding with B-Bots with you. B-Bots help us learn math and they are so much fun, and they can learn us math. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to come up here? Okay. Just come up there. us think and learn. I wish I could do STEM all day. <laughs> I think I think the bee bots are really cool. They're like little animals we get to train and teach.
In addition to BeBots, students also learn to code with the Coda Pillar, which is pictured on the left. Mason Waters is going to explain how the Coda Pillar works. This is how this is how you use the code a pillar. You click these pieces together and then you press go on the head. Each piece is a direction like left or right or straight. Other STEM centers also give students the opportunity to work together to build, design, think critically, and have fun. Activities include Jenga, Legos, magnetic tiles, where students love showing off their creations. We also have a weaving loom. And also puzzles. The students get so excited when they're able to finish something to completion before library resource is over. Olivia Brownheim would like to share her thoughts about STEM centers with you. The reason I enjoy STEM centers is because I have fun playing with it, figuring out strategies, cooperating with others. Here are a couple of things we do in STEM centers. Weaving loom, brain flakes, leg, no, Legos, I think, and whatever other nonsense. The newest addition to our library is our 10 makerspace activity stations. Students just started exploring with these activities over the last several days. Some of our makerspace activities focus on creative building, such as the brain flakes you see on the screen, where one of our students designed and created this sunflower during his first opportunity to work with them. And building with bunchums, where the possibilities of what students create is truly endless. Other makerspace activities give students the opportunity to design and construct together, such as the magnet tablet where they work together to recreate a picture with a magnetic stylus and metal beads, and the marble run where students design a maze and see just how their marble gets from beginning to end. On the left, students are competing with each other to recreate a pattern puzzle as quickly as possible with cubits. And on the right, students are learning that the old-fashioned spirograph will allow them to make beautiful designs, but may not be quite as easy as they originally thought. And finally, students are using straws and connector pieces to design and create whatever they like. In the picture, these students use the straw bees to build a propeller and umbrella. The Pocosin Primary School Library is a fun place, and the students are always excited to come for resource. The library programs that I have shared with you tonight would not have been possible without the continued support of the Pocosin Education Foundation, the PCPS STEM Grant, and the Pocosin Primary School PTO. Funding has been provided by these organizations for many of the resources you've seen and heard about tonight, and PPS is so grateful for the support. Finally, the Pocosin Primary School Library Program allows students to flourish in many ways. We read wonderful stories, overcome challenges together, learn to work as a team, demonstrate what it means to be a good citizen, and learn through play. Students are taught to be independent and confident in their abilities, and the best part is that we are always having fun. Thank you again for allowing me the opportunity to share the Pocosin Primary School Library Program with you tonight, and if you would like to have the full experience, board members feel free to visit any afternoon. I can promise you a fun time and students who will certainly be eager to teach you a thing or two as I am privileged to learn from them every day. Thank you, Ms. Archer, and uh, thank you very much, students. Y'all did a, a nice job. Looks like you have lots of learning opportunities and lots of time to be creative. 
Uh, do we have any additions and modifications to the agenda? We do not this evening. And next is recognitions. Dr. Parrish? Yes. As Dr. Carter makes his way down to the podium, I do want to let folks know that our cable is not working, so this is not on right now, but we are recording it, so it will be on our website hopefully by sometime tomorrow. So parents, you can send the link to people throughout the world. So we want to let you know that. Our first recognition this evening is a recognition for Dominion Energy. And we would like the following members of the Dominion team to please come forward, starting with Melanie Beal, Jason Winslow, Jason Smith, Jason West, and Dennis Guzik. We'd like to extend our appreciation and thanks for the work done by the employees of Dominion Energy who donated their time to perform the work necessary to erect six 60-foot poles that were also donated and to install and wire the heavy light fixtures which illuminate the track and practice field at Pocosin High School. The work done by the Dominion staff took numerous visits and several different crews over a 12-month period. Please know that without this assistance, we would not have been able to get the LED light package that will be virtually maintenance-free and last for 10 years between bulb changes. It also is enabling us to provide more activities for our students back behind the high school. Please join me in thanking Dominion Energy for helping Pocosin City Public Schools. I would like to next recognize Muriel Morris, if she'd please come forward. Ms. Morris is a reading volunteer for Pocosin Primary School. She has volunteered her time reading with students over the past five years, working with 12 different teachers. Mrs. Morris views her involvement as both a priority and a blessing, and she is thankful for the opportunity to be a reading volunteer. Mrs. Morris has made working with children a part of her daily life as she comes from a large family and has always worked with children. Mrs. Morris was born and raised in Massachusetts and moved to Percocin after she and her husband were married. Percocin is her husband's hometown, and we're certainly glad that he brought her back. <laughs> Mrs. Morris was a delivery nurse and has five grandchildren between the primary school and the elementary school. Please join me in congratulating Mrs. Morris for being named the Volunteer of the Month. Next, we'd like to call forward Zoe, uh, Zoe Ozorowski. Zoe is the December Senior of the Month. As a junior, she was the AP Biology and AP Human Geography Student of the Year. Zoe is currently a member of the National Honor Society, the Spanish Honor Society, the Science Honor Society, and Mu Alpha Theta. In addition to her academic achievements, she was a captain of the Varsity Sideline Cheer Squad and is quite active in Model UN, International Club, Key Club, and Save the Bees Club. She also helped to organize a voter registration drive this past fall. When she is not involved in school-related activities, you may find her volunteering at the Precocin Animal Welfare Society or perhaps working in the mall at Tilly's. <laughs> After graduation in June, she plans to attend college at either Berkeley or UVA, where she hopes to major in international studies or biology. Please join me in congratulating Zoe as the Senior of the Month. Next, we'd like to um, recognize our varsity volleyball team. So I'll ask the players to come forward, please. First, Uli Diffenworth. <laughs> Jordan Duty. <laughs> Davon Hedrick. <laughs> Hannah Hughes. <laughs> Jordan Jones. Logan Mordica, Braylon 
rise. Zoe Dupree. Lauren Hagen. Jamie Stegerwald. And Sarah Steppen. Also, if we please get up and forward our coaches, Mr. Tim Haddock and Ms. Hannah Mick. The 2018-19 Procosin Varsity Volleyball team finished the season with a record of 21-7, were, were the Class 3 Section A Regional Championships and Class 3 State Runner-Up. The season started by taking first place at the Lady Knights Classic hosted by Peninsula Catholic. This win in the championship match against PC meant a lot to the players and Coach Haddock because both teams know each other very well. The ladies followed that up by beating Jamestown for the first time in at least 13 years. The team had many other great victories and a few crushing losses. The losses were few and far between, though. After the loss to Warhill on October 9th, the ladies wouldn't lose a match again until November 16th in the state finals. Once they moved on to the playoffs, the group really began to click, not just on the court, but also off. The families and players did a wonderful job of pulling together and doing all they could to keep the season going. As part of this, I also would like to recognize the following ladies for being selected on either the All-Region Team, All-State Team, or both. All-Region Team Player of the Year was Logan Mordica. State team, first team was Logan Mordica and Hannah Hips. And second team was Ellie Diefenworth. The Lady Islanders are losing three seniors for next season. Jordan Duty, Ellie Diefenworth, and Molly Patterson, who could not attend this evening but will be recognized next month. All three ladies have been three-year starters. Please join me in congratulating this wonderful group of young women for their accomplishment of being runner-up in the state. I have to pose for the paparazzi. <laughs> This time we will take a short break.
Superintendent. Okay, we'll uh, move into presentations and reports. And first is Ms. Woodruff with the financial update. Good evening, Chairman Carter, members of the school board, and Dr. Parrish. For the finance report this evening, I want to review the audit reports with you. The FY18 audit was completed by Cherry Becker LLP, who have been our auditor since 2009. The school division is included in the city's comprehensive annual financial report, or CAFR, as a component unit. And the auditors issue several reports within the CAFR. The first one is the report of the independent auditor, which describes the scope of the audit and confirms that there were no significant audit findings. On page 135 of the CAFR, the audit opinions are listed, and I am pleased to report that the auditor's opinion was unmodified for the financial statements and federal awards, which is the best opinion that can be received. In addition, the school division had no material weaknesses or significant deficiencies identified. There is also an activity funds report. The activity funds are those funds that are held at the school level, and they are the responsibility of the principal. For activity funds, the auditors review the year-end financial statements and perform an appropriate level of test work to confirm that the financial statements present fairly in all material respects the cash receipts, disbursements, and ending balances. And that was the opinion of the auditors, so this was also a very good report from the auditors. The activity fund communication letter is a report of the internal control deficiencies. You will note that there were no material weaknesses identified. However, on page two, there were two minor deficiencies that were noted at the primary school and one at the elementary school. Overall, these are excellent audit reports, and I congratulate the principals and bookkeepers for all of their hard work. You all have the school activity report and audit letters I just spoke about. A copy of the city's CAFR can be found on their website. And if you have any questions, once you have more time to review in detail, please let me know. And that concludes my report this evening. Questions? Thanks to everyone. Get this type of report. Thank you. Thanks. Next is operations update with Mr. Pappas. Good evening, Chairman Carter, School Board, Dr. Parrish. Earlier this month, a Pocosin City resident, lifelong resident, came into the school board office and wanted to speak to me, that individual wanted to donate and did donate over $700 to settle the outstanding debts of all primary and elementary school students of record as of the day he walked in. That individual wishes to remain anonymous and we will respect that request uh, in the holiday spirit. That was just really wonderful. So the USDA just announced a final ruling on the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act that will add some flexibility to school menus. Of particular note is the relaxation of the whole grain component, which should give students a more pleasurable uh, pizza crust and pasta experience. <laughs> PCPS School Food Services website is up and running, and it's got interactive menus. You can hover over and see all the nutritional information for the offerings of any given day. Maintenance staff, as well as custodial staff, will be working over the break to do many preventive maintenance and deep cleaning activities that can otherwise not be accomplished during the school year. Of particular noteworthiness is the chiller and the cooling tower at the high school. Those will get overhauled over the break, and then we get a chance to go in and put some wax in the computer labs, which are almost impossible to get into during the school year. And that concludes my operations report. Thanks, sir. Questions? Uh, the debts you're talking about, was that lunches or yes. library fees? Or no, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, it was a food was service, uh, breakfast and lunch debts. I mean, if my granddaughter had eaten the day before and charged $3 and didn't have the food, that debt was brought to zero. And if someone That's had a larger balance, that was wiped out as well. Did you talk to my wife about the whole grain component thing the next time you see her? I appreciate that. 
<laughs> if the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act can change, then, yes, then there's hope. Yes, in my house. <laughs> Anybody else? Thank you, sir. An instructional update with Dr. Fox. Good evening, Chairman Carter, Vice Chair Sheeler, members of the board, and Dr. Parrish. This evening, my um, instructional update will provide you um, just a short update on the three grants that we have working um, in Picosin from the Department of Defense. Um, the first and newest grant that we were awarded in September supports the integration of academic, social, and behavioral interventions in grades, in grades K through 8 to enhance college and career readiness, as well as STEM and PBL. This is our tiered system of supports grant. Currently, our division leadership team is meeting with coaches to help guide the implementation process. Our school-based teams are taking part in training sessions and reviewing data. Teachers and staff are participating in professional development that is focused on positive behavioral intervention and supports, also known as PBIS, which then helps students' behaviors and work habits so that they're ready to be focused on instruction. And we're also in the process of developing what are called resource maps, which you can think of as like a menu of interventions based on specific student needs. The STEM for All grant, um, our division math committee is meeting to share how they are using different hands-on math tools. They're learning to use the Desmos online calculator. They're discussing data and they're studying math processes such as reasoning and problem solving. Teachers are updating the math curriculum that's been developed to include assessments. They're also working teachers and staff to participate in professional learning, such as analyzing teaching practices through video. Students are engaging in hands-on activities in the classroom. And if you recall from last month's update, we had a great STEM day and STEM night in November. Our project-based learning grant, our teachers at the middle school and um, their administrators participated in the PBL 101 professional learning session this summer. The middle school and high school teachers also participated in a project called Project Slice, where they um, get a feeling for what it's like to be a student who's participating in a project-based learning experience. Our secondary paraprofessionals received PBL training. We also are having sustained support visits from one of our partners, the Buck Institute, who help us with project-based learning. And some of our teachers have had the opportunity to take field trips to different schools in the area where they're seeing PBL in action. We had a group from the middle school visit schools in Chesterfield, and then just recently we had some of our math and science teachers visit Rappahannock High School. And we're also seeing some very robust real-world learning taking place through activities such as the Spanish Restaurant Project and the PES Acoustic Project. And lastly tonight, we just want to put this on your radar, or save the date. Our second annual K-12 Instructional Showcase Night will be Thursday, March 7th at 6 p.m. Um, and that's where you can come and see some of these great project and learning activities um, taking place, seeing our students and teachers doing their work. That's all I have for you tonight. Dr. Fox, Thank you. Uh, do we have any public comment? Walk us through the consent agenda, please. Yes, sir. The consent agenda includes the approval of financial report, approval of personnel action, the authorization to change appropriation and to accept and expend funds in accordance with the attached request, and the approval of minutes of the November regular meeting work session. Ma'am, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Approved. And a second? Second. Uh, Ms. Rymers, could you call for a vote, please? Mr. Holcomb? Aye. Ms. Hessel? Aye. Mr. Trowman? Aye. Vice Chair Schuller? Aye. Chairman Carter? Aye. Motion passes 5-0. Next, other matters of consideration. First up is consideration of approval of PS Capital Improvement Plan for fiscal year 20 through Dr. Parrish? Yes, we um, talked about this in our work session last month, so we're bringing it forward to you for final approval. As you see here on the screen, we've put what our recommended um, capital is um, for the next five years and also beyond. To note, um, it's important to note here, one, that you see middle schools as the projects at this time. That's because we've already this year are starting to engage the work on the middle school renovation and modernization project, so it's no longer showing up on our capital improvement plan, which is actually very exciting for us. 
Um, in addition to the $17 million that the City Council um, approved and the City is now acquired for us, we also are receiving some additional money to the primary school roof as well as the high school roof, but we'll be waiting to start that work until after we get the middle school project going to ensure that this will all fall um, in the cost and the total of $20 million. Um, again, you see across the bottom bus replacement schedule. So as part of the funding that was um, acquired by the city, we are able to purchase additional buses, five of those in the, in the coming year. So that will be of great assistance to us. But you see that continues to run throughout the CIP and beyond because we always do have a need to replace buses. The state um, has buses on a 15-year replacement cycle, um, and some of ours, I will tell you, still are beyond even the 15 years on the road. So we'll continue to see those on our CIP. You see um, also now in the out years um, some other projects that we want to make sure that the community is well aware of. One to mention you see here the farm renovation, which may um, actually be wrapped into the middle school project if we're able to in the funding provided to include an auditorium or um, uh, to make the current one somewhat larger to satisfy the needs of both the high school and the middle school. What I want to also draw your attention to is a chiller and water tower that's beyond 2024 that will um, need to be replaced. So we want to make sure that the community is aware of that. As well, you continue to see the um, asphalt replacements. And on 2024, so just be, before the beyond, what you see is the turf field replacement. Many of you know that we've had that field in place now for um, 10 years, going finishing its 11th year, and that will need some work on it and some replacement. So we wanted to get that in the CIP um, because that is going to come at a cost of $400,000. So with that, um, I recommend approval of the proposed Capital improvement plan. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve item A? Motion to approve. And a second? Second that motion. Any questions there, comments? Ms. Rymers. Mr. Hogan? Aye. Aye. Mr. Travel? Aye. Vice Chair Schuler? Aye. Chairman Parker? Aye. Motion passes 5 2. Thank you. And B, consideration of approval of second reading of changed policy. 7 TAC 3.4, notice of suspensions, Dr. Parrish. Yes, we brought that to you for first reading at your last meeting, so we're asking that you approve this this evening so it can become part of policy. As you remember, um, due to um, changes in the law, that we did see some changes in how suspensions, long-term suspensions are handled, and suspension for some of our youngest students. As part of that, VDOE was required to come up with definitions um, for aggravating circumstances as it applied to the code, because in some instances, aggravating circumstances may drive us to take different actions um, with students in certain discipline scenarios. So this um, allows us to update your code by including the definition of those aggravating circumstances um, as part of the changes. So with that, I'd ask that you approve brought forward to you tonight in this policy. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. Any questions, comments there? Thank you. Ms. Reimers, please call for a vote. Mr. Hogan? Aye. Ms. Hessel? Aye. Mr. Cowman? Aye. Vice Chair Aye. Chairman Carter? Aye. Motion passes 5 0. Thank you, ma'am. And communications, other matters for. Dr. Parrish, would you like to kick us off? Yes, I'd like to just um, take the opportunity because I think that we saw this evening how um, supportive our community is when we set out to do something, um, we do do it. And that's what the STEM program that you saw with the, um, with the primary school today. Dr. Fox presented an update on the STEM grant, and our um, Ms. Archer mentioned the fact that the STEM grant helped to fund that along with the Pocosin Education Foundation as well as the Pocosin Primary PTO. So I just think it's a great example of the um, dynamic learning experiences that we can provide for our students and the support um, that we get so that we can provide those and then to actually see the students engaged in it um, and what are very beneficial learning opportunities was nice this evening. So I just thought um, it really pulled it all together for us and I wanted to definitely highlight that for everybody. Also, um, it is that time to begin the conversation about budget. So as 
um, saw and many of you in the community saw um, our governor did recommend additional funding for teacher raises as well as some funding that would may support um, school divisions in other ways his budget was released today and we actually just received today the information from the Virginia Department of Education that we need that got it out quicker I think than we've ever seen happen so um, we'll be working on that this week and when we come back from break so at your January meeting we'll be able to give you an update as to what the governor's budget proposed budget means for us and actual dollar amounts and then as you remember we'll then receive budgets too from both the House of Delegates and the Senate so our budget work will continue in through March but I just wanted to let everyone know that we have begun to the work of it and finally I just want to wish everybody a very relaxing and happy break and tell everybody to please stay safe and we look forward to seeing everybody and Brendan thank you <clears throat> The first school board report comes from the primary school. Pocosum Primary School is thankful for the opportunity to present this evening to the school board and thankful for our students' parents for bringing them this evening. We are very proud of the work our students are doing in school. Pocosum Primary staff was awarded with a delicious breakfast on December 6th from the Pocosum Education Foundation for the most staff participation in the annual run for the Bulls. Six teachers were awarded PEF grants for the, fall, for the fall grant submission. We are thankful for the PEF support of our school. We are looking forward to the Pocosin High School chorus performance at our school on Thursday morning. All of our primary school students will also be taking home a book to read over the winter break on Thursday, which is supplied through a generous donation from the Pocosin Kiwanis chapter. Pocosin Primary wishes everyone a safe and happy holiday season. The next report comes from the elementary school and Dr. Wood. Pocosin Elementary School has been collecting canned food for a food drive sponsored by the SCA. It is also a competition between classes to see who can collect the most food. On November 12th, Bayport Savings and Loan was at PES in the morning as students arrived to collect money from those students who have opened a savings account. Bayport employees come each month to collect money and make deposits for students and also provide financial literacy for students during some monthly visits. Last Thursday, PES had a book fair at Barnes & Noble Bookstore. It was a fabulous event with students presenting a reader's theater of the 12 days of Christmas vacation. There was a STEM activity for students to take part in and student artwork was displayed for others to enjoy. It was a very well attended event and with the profits, the PES library will be able to purchase some new books and games for teachers and students to use as part of instruction. The next report comes from the middle school. The Pocosa Middle School Band and Chorus held their winter concerts this month. Their performances were outstanding and they are commended for their hard work. The chorus students will be performing for the middle school students in a school-wide assembly this Thursday, December 20th. The PMS band and chorus performed for the fifth graders at the middle school on Friday, December 7th. Students in all grades have been busy participating in classroom lessons focused on interest inventories and career exploration led by the PMS school counselors. We have continued our all-in focus on the citizenship character trait and we look forward to continuing our all-in challenges after winter break. We would like to wish everyone a safe and happy holiday break and are looking forward to 2019. The final report comes from the high school and Dr. Sayak. The past month has been a busy one for Pocosin High School. Our school-wide focus on kindness continued as students work to give back to our community. The Student Council Association celebrated the furry friends of both students and faculty, working to raise funds for PAWS and the SBCA. Cheerleaders conducted a shoe drive while the Key Club rang the bells for the Salvation Army. Additionally, Teens for Troops gathered over 18,000 cookies, which will be shared with local service members. Our Arrive Alive program conducted the second seatbelt safety check of the school year, honoring safe drivers with prizes, while students in driver's education viewed real-world scenarios and discussed the importance of observing your surroundings when behind the wheel. Students in astronomy classes constructed their own telescopes, while students in Spanish classes explored a walk on the red carpet and a Spanish-speaking country through project-based learning. Students in English 11 delivered public speeches and practiced the feedback process, and a number of English classes participated in a workshop with the Virginia State Company. The arts are also thriving at PHS, as both band and chorus students delivered stellar winter concerts 
and are preparing to share their talents with the students at both Pocosin Primary and Pocosin Elementary later this week. Preparations are also underway for the PHS Spring Musical, a high school adaptation of Greece. Our students continue to make their mark at PHS and in the community. We wish everyone a safe holiday break and look forward to what 2019 has in store. This concludes my reports. Thank you, sir. Mr. Holcomb. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we had a chance to go to Dr. Parrish's house for a holiday party last week, or this week, I guess it is, a few days ago. And I met a lot of um, teachers and staff I hadn't met before. I just I met a couple that had been with us a long time. And I was just impressed that through all these years, I've been, this is my fourth year, and all those years have been contraction years. You know, that, that Dr. Parrish and her staff have worked very hard to keep things together and make things work. And we've had a, a, a large amount of staff and teachers who've been here through that whole process, which really surprised me. I never looked at it that way before. So thank you for what you all are doing and for hanging with us. I think this year was the first year we've had some good news, which is a great year for us, but thank you for all that. Um, so it was surprising to me to see how many folks had been here uh, that long and, and made it happen. Uh, also, there was no law enforcement involvement that night at the party. I feel good about <laughs> announcing that. That was good. That was good to know. Uh, so that was good. Um, uh, the band departments, I went to both concerts this year, um, have students in both those bands this year. So I was excited to find out we had to kick the eighth graders out to make room for the seventh graders and the sixth graders. That was, that was exciting. And both those concerts really got us to slow down and get in the mood. I really appreciate the work that those band directors and the band staffs have done. So uh, have a Merry Christmas all. Keep it safe. No law enforcement involvement. That's, that's important. And we'll look forward to seeing you next year. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I can't really top that off too much. <laughs> Good job, Wayne. Thank you. Um, I will say it's it's great to see all the community involvement. Um, great year, and I'm happy for that. Um, hope everybody has a Merry Christmas and Happy Holiday. Thank you, Mr. Trout. So I had fun today at lunch. I had to get a chance to go to Richmond and see Governor Northrop speak, actually, and he specifically spoke about school systems and uh, he was accompanied by a gentleman with Huntington Ingalls and their commentary was very interesting and I thought it was appropriate for the school board meeting tonight. They talked about elementary education, primary school education and education before coming to school as a matter of national security and the ability to grow a workforce in Virginia. And so I thought that was extremely interesting and I wanted to say that you know it's nice to come and see the STEM projects. It tied in well with what was going on in the conversation today because it said, hey, we just landed Amazon. It, we just landed a need that we're going to have some 30,000 uh, college students graduating with computer science degrees in the state of Virginia, Commonwealth of Virginia this year. And we're going to want to retain those kids. But we're going to need to feed this ongoing system for the next generation. And, and it's good to see that we're doing that here in Pocosin. Uh, so congratulations to all the principals and all the teachers that are making that happen uh, for and it, incorporating it in not only, you know, your, your normal class periods, but it was great that our library teacher is incorporating that. So it was, it was a, a, uh, a great presentation today by the governor, a uh, great presentation by Huntington Ingalls in, in regards to that. So uh, great job. Again, I want to echo the team that has already said that, but it's amazing to have someone in the community step up and give $700 to clean up uh, food bills. And, and we know if kids are hungry, they, they're not going to study and pay attention while they're in class. So the ability for quality food, even if it's whole grain and now not whole grain, uh, we are really excited about that. Um, and uh, so thank you for the whoever that individual was. I want to make sure we drive that uh, attention. And for the and the community support it's been tremendous it, it is about the christmas season the holiday season and giving back and uh, very thankful to live in a community in which that happens so it's a great first uh year quote unquote because it's the end of the calendar year for me for being on the school board uh so looking forward to 2019 and all the good things dr parish thank you for having us at your house we really do appreciate it thank you um i hope also that everyone has a wonderful holiday and lots of time to be with loved ones I just wanted to say that uh, one of my favorite things about being in a small town like Pocosin is um, things like the holiday parade. The band lead off this holiday parade. Residents lined up for it. It was just a, a wonderful thing. 
very excited about that. Um, also had uh, an opportunity to participate as a member of a uh, community emergency response team with a little traffic control for the holiday party on Ridge Bay. That's just an astonishing thing that, that together the Santa arrives by by a fire truck at six o'clock <laughs> and some 500 people come by and see Santa and get a little present and come home. Just a, it just really made me feel good about the holidays. So, yeah, hooray, hooray, Pocosin. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Um, the work that the people in the school, from superintendent all the way down, every, everybody who falls under, the, um, under her is amazing on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, what you have to deal with, what you have to work with, and you still make it work. Uh, and doing things like paying off, you know, just just cut dollars uh, and fifty cents um, a lunch debt, seven hundred dollars worth total is is just amazing. And Coast and Education Foundation and our just everybody is um, it's very impressive. It's humbling. Um, so I would encourage everybody season you can get really busy hectic way too much money a lot of times and you get wrapped up in in uh, material things really don't matter um, stay focused it does matter which is the people around you uh, loved ones the people in the community and focus on all the things that that uh we are thankful for um, just because we live in this great free country <coughs> and bless all those vets who are going to be separated from their loved ones we have uh, community members here who are going to be separated from their their uh, military sons wives daughters husbands over the holidays so keep them in mind as well and have a safe enjoyable break and we will see you next year. have any material for board review we do not other than the document that was given to you to support the audit report and I do want to just one more quick comment and thank mrs. Woodruff and her team for the wonderful audit report that we have at our desk in front of us so it shows a tremendous job thank you thank you with that we will adjourn to the work session <coughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.